afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Jeanette Hall, and I work at the Colorado Geological Survey as a geologist. I want to welcome you here today on a speaker session for my recently published paper on using satellite imagery as a tool to enhance geological mapping. This all started when I was an undergrad at University of Colorado Denver. Um, one summer in 2014, I helped Dr. Hoke survey four state parks here in Colorado. One of the parks, which is Golden Gate Canyon State Park, there was an area we could not access because of uh, the right of way was through a private property and, and the, the guy just didn't want to let us through. So Dr. Hoke told me that we would have to use photos, aerial photography, to use those to finish our survey. And I asked her when they were taken or if we had to get them taken. And she says, oh, they're 50 years old. So I thought to myself, there's got to be some way to find data that is uh, more recent, more relevant to what we're doing. 50-year-old pictures, we could have had landslides or, or, or far as far as or anything between then and now. So this is what started this research. So today I'm going to show you a tool to enhance your geological survey and mapping. I believe after I've shown you this results of my research on remote sensing, you too will see the benefits of using it in your geological surveys and mapping. So when we finish that park, that I was telling you at Golden Gate Canyon, and we had no access, we turned over the information to the state parks and they really enjoyed our work. And we told them that the geology on that park is so diverse they should take and make an educational display for the public. Well, they didn't seem to be concerned or, or excited about it until three years later, which was just this past January, they contacted Dr. Hope and asked her if she would still be interested in making an educational survey, uh, educational display from our surveys. And she told him yes, so she contacted me and my service learning project was actually helping her do that educational display. We worked over 20 hours on the display and um, it should be up and posted here this late this summer at in the Parks uh, Visitor Center. So stop by and see it if you're ever in the area. So the first thing I want to do is I want to focus in on this project to show the research viability of using satellite imagery. Using Landsat 8, which is one of the newer satellites that's up there taking these images for us on a daily basis, hourly, hourly rotating around the earth and taking photography with remote cameras and sensing and like I said they are taking photographs. The imaging that I used I download for free and they are at 30 meter resolution. There is resolution that are much better, but they're not available for the public. Although um, this 30 minute, milli, 30 meter resolution does show us the possibilities of what the satellite can do for a geologist. So the first thing I want to show you is I took two land survey maps. These are geological maps of Jones Hill and the Marmot Peak. And they're both seven and a half minute quadrangles. That's the time it takes the Earth to rotate from here to here in seven and a half minutes. Dr. Hope also worked on these surveys and helped make these maps in back in 2011 and 2012. So I took data that I had downloaded just last week and I ran it through ArcGIS 10.22 and I used MV 5.2. MV is actually made for remote sensing. It can utilize the information that the satellite gathered much better than a mapping program that GIS has. 
No, the viability and the accuracy is what we're looking for. So I used the data in both these programs and I had to do an unclassified supervision and I asked for 15 classes. I didn't tell it anything, I didn't train it, I just said, let me see what you can do. ARC GIS is an ISO clustered unsupervised classification. MV, I used a K-means classification. K-means is a mathematical equation that it uses on each 30 meter square that it sees on the Earth. And it calculates what that is with the reflected value that came through. On here, as you can see, there's alluvial stream in Jones Hill, and ArcGIS actually sees that, and, and we can see that it, it found that. Envy did much better. They seen the alluvial deposits and they classified them as different types of alluvial deposits. This in here is light blue for where the streams are, and these here are green and purple, which shows that it may be because of its age or its composition. Down here on Marmot Peak, it had the same uh, results for alluvium. It found them. All the purple is an alluvium type uh, geology. And MV as well found them, and they're in the same locations. This area here is gypsum, and you can tell it's a little different in each, each analyzed um, data platform. This here is two areas, here and here. It finds a line of demarcation but it didn't know how to determine if they were different. As for the survey, there's three different um, limestones in that region. Emily did a little bit better. We can see a pink and a blue difference between the two areas, although there's four there. So it did much better at trying to determine the different types of soil. I must make a a uh, different kind of analytic model on both of this data because these areas are completely covered with vegetation. And as you know, vegetation, certain vegetation will grow in certain soils. This area that I have up here is gypsum. As you know, sagebrush grows in gypsum. Very little of anything else grows. You might find a pine tree here and there, but sagebrush. So I'll need to take in the future and run a vegetation model to find out what vegetation is where and use that against my next step for this research. My next step is to take and do supervised classification that is telling the computer and the software that this, this area is an alluvial stream or this is gypsum or this is granite. As you can tell, the results of, of my research analysis of Landsat imagery, imagery from um, Landsat 8 is strong and a positive result to continue this research. This was a preliminary research to see if it was viable. And I do believe it is viable. So, if you want to take and use this, you don't have to wait months like a, 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 a area of photography. Area of photography is expensive. You have to schedule for it or you have to use something that's 40 years old. This data is free. I downloaded it in a matter of 15 minutes. I ran it through the processors 15 minutes each. So I spent less than an hour downloading the data and getting these results. Once I've made a model so it can work on the, the supervised classifications, I have four other seven and a half minute quadrangles to take and check for the proficiency and for the actual correctness of these 
classifications that the computer can do for us. So if you're in the field, you can take and call back to the office and say, hey, I can't get into an area. Can you download this information and send it to me? You can send these to people via PDFs. You don't have to send the massive data load that it is on your computer to run this process. You can just show them an image and they'll be able to do it. So I'd like to thank you for coming today and listening to my speaker presentation on my previously published peer review paper. I will be taking questions after the session and I can I have extra paper copies of the paper I can give you and I can give you resources on how to do this for yourself. Thank you and have a good day and the rest of your conference.